If I told you some line of code put into a microprocessor with the same power as a PlayStation 1 may one day save the world, would you believe me? NASA just had a successful mission called DART, which was a mission where a spaceship had to search through dim dots of light to find an asteroid which was 61,000 miles away. Since using a joystick to navigate it from Earth was not an option, it had to be fully autonomous to be able to crash into the asteroid and alter its orbit. The microprocessor used to enable autonomous navigation is called SmartNav. Autonomous navigation is used in multiple settings and has become quite the buzzword. But how is it developed and what tools are typically used? Autonomous navigation is not always used to enable the controlled object to calculate the perfect speed and direction it needs to be able to crash into other objects. Often is actually quite opposite how to avoid crashing. The elements used to achieve self-driven cars can be divided into four different main components. Perception, localization, planning and control. Because of its performance, reliability and connection to hardware, C++ is the go-to language when it comes to self-driven cars. It also enables interface contracts, good abstractions, deterministic functioning and is therefore used in most of these components. Python is also a language that is used. It's not unlikely to find this programming language used in the perception component. Even though some of the Python libraries is wrapped C and C++ libraries, you may end up with a performance issue when using Python. This shows how dependent self-driven cars are on getting data in real time. MATLAB is something you probably hear about in the world of autonomous driving development. Together with Simulink, engineers are able to simulate and test their system. MATLAB was even used in the development of SmartNav, the navigation system used in the DART spaceship. Both C++ and Python is easy to use together with robot operating system, usually referred to as ROS. ROS is an ecosystem of software libraries for robot development, and since autonomous vehicles basically are large wheeled robots, this makes the development easier. It's common to run ROS on top of Ubuntu. No matter which of these languages you use for the sensors, radars or controllers, you need an algorithm that can incorporate all of these data and create an output. Also here, there are a few alternatives. The most common is deep learning or neural network algorithms, which is a subset of machine learning. A neural network is a network of artificial neurons that takes a set of input, put a weight on those input, sums the weight together and applies a bias that sits on each neuron, then uses an activation function to create a zero to one output. But such an algorithm has its limits, and as of now, we are still at level 3 out of 6 in self-driving cars, which means there has to be a human driver monitoring the driving. Getting beyond that level might be trickier than we first thought. Safer than a person. By the end of next year. Autonomous rover taxis for Tesla next year. And releasing it to the Tesla customer base uh, next year. I mean, it's looking quite likely that it will be next year. And even when we get to level 6, we still have the troll dilemma, which goes something like this. In cases where crashing is the only outcome, who should it hurt? the passenger or the people outside the car. So if you ever get a car like that, you should probably take good care of it. 